As a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, there were certain movies and movie franchises that really hit home for various reasons, including one that even, to this date, I regard as one of the most brutal action films of all time. And now, many years after the original and lots of failed attempts, we have a new game on the market with Robocop Rogue City. So we've put it to the test on many, many different graphics cards. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never going to be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son. It is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. Okay, so before we jump into the huge amounts of numbers and performance figures, let's talk about the game. First and foremost, and remembering some of the Robocop games from the past, I wondered how the developers would go about a new game, and honestly assumed that it would be like a on-rail shooter, very much like Time Crisis was back in the day. But opening up the game, I was pleasantly surprised that there's actually a much more, I guess, open game element to it, where you can go off and do your own thing to a degree, whether that be sticking to the main mission, doing side missions, or just generally exploring, where you can do some I guess fun things like issuing tickets to certain thugs in the heart of Detroit. Now, based on the latest Unreal 5 engine, the game looks pretty damn decent, as long as you're on the higher graphics preset and at a higher resolution, because throughout testing, it's pretty clear to see that the lower settings and lower resolutions, while they look good in certain areas, well, they kind of also have an almost gray paint effect in places, like the ground, where the quality just, well, suffers. Luckily, moving up to high or even epic does combat this, but be prepared that you're going to need some hefty power from your system, mainly with your graphics card, because while the game doesn't have ray tracing of any kind, it can still be quite a burden, even on a modest PC setup. Now, there is a way of combating that though, which is upscaling, of which the game supports FSR 2.2, DLSS, and Intel's Zest. Though, if you don't want to use upscaling for whatever reason, I get it, not everyone likes it, then you do still have TAA or TSR, though that's kind of still classed as a form of upscaling, just maybe not to the same extent as DLSS, FSR, or ZES. So they will all help to claw back some frames, but the downside is, in most cases, it looks, yeah, bloody awful. Now, in the scene that we tested, it actually added a kind of sparkle to the floor that after a while became just annoying as you walked through, where the upscaling tech was almost trying too hard to improve textures, lighting and reflections, and instead just failed flat on its nose. Now, for me, I'd much rather just dull the settings and the resolution back ever so slightly than using any form of upscaling tech in this game, or to even dial that down if you do want to use upscaling, but maybe put it to quality instead of performance, though then you're going to suffer in the performance. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that really comes down to personal preference as to what you're trying to achieve through upscaling. Also, and I know that it can be fixed through patches and updates, but with the game's menu not having a fixed frame rate, it leads to some pretty bad lag issues when you first boot the game up, which do subside after about 20 seconds, but when you're testing the amount of GPUs we did and restarting the game every 20 minutes or so, it did get just a bit frustrating. Also, on top of that, the only other issue that we did find was on Nvidia cards, where restarting at a checkpoint with any form of upscaling on led to a crash, and the game then had to be restarted. Then you had to turn upscaling off, then restart the checkpoint for our benchmark run, and then enable upscaling again. Again, just frustrating and just, I guess, a niggly thing, but it can be fixed, I'm sure. Now, in terms of the settings, along with the upscaling options, it's all kept pretty simple, with low, medium, high, and epic presets, of which, of course, you can alter the likes of shadows, textures, effects, and motion blur, and kind of make it a bit more custom. And then of course, resolution. And if you are rocking a 40 series card, there's one more option for upscaling. You can enable frame generation, of which we have tested as well. So the real reason you came here, testing and performance figures to see how each GPU did. And we've tested quite a few scenarios. So bear with me as there's gonna be a lot to go through. 
Now for benchmarking, we used our GPU test system with an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D and 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 6000 MHz CL30 memory. For our motherboard, we put those parts into a Gigabyte B650E Aorus Master with the latest BIOS, and all of our testing was done on the latest update of Windows 11 with the AMD 23.10.2 and NVIDIA 545.92 drivers. Also, if you want to get access to all of the charts and want to show your support for the huge amount of work we put into this testing, then you can over on our Patreon, where you'll get a ton of kind of cool and exclusive benefits as well. The link is, as always, down below. So, with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. So starting things off with 1080p low, and straight away, I wanna say that there are some clear and evident issues with the game. Firstly, there is some CPU bottleneck issues happening on the higher end cards with the RTX 4080 beating the RTX 4090 by two frames per second. But at such a low resolution, that sometimes happens. Now, as we move down the stack, this is where the weirdness really starts to present itself with the other 40 series cards. The RTX 4070 comes in at 165 FPS, while the RTX 4060 Ti somehow manages to come in above it at 179 FPS, and the RTX 4060 at 152 FPS. Upon retesting some of these cards, the results just don't make any sense, with the RTX 4060 Ti now getting 97 FPS, which is quite a dramatic drop from 152, and the 4060 non-Ti now coming in at 122 FPS, which, while it is a drop from 152, it now sits above the 4060 Ti, which should in theory be faster. Now another card that when we made our Alan Wake 2 video that people commented on was our Zotac RTX 3090 Trinity, which at 1080p low came in at 161 FPS in Robocop, while a test on an MSI Supreme X model gave us a result of 129 FPS, which would put it just below the RTX 3070. So again, some really major issues going on with the game at the lower preset. As we move down the chart, there really isn't anything to comment on because, as I mentioned, at 1080p low, the results are just, well, all over the place. At 1440p, things start to behave themselves a little, with the RTX 4090 now sitting at the top, though the likes of the RTX 4060 Ti is still a standout card in all of the wrong ways, as it comes in at 120 FPS, while the more powerful RTX 4070 sits below it at 115 FPS. Again, our RTX 3090 gave us 122 FPS, but retesting the MSI version gave us 98, which is dramatically lower and puts it again out of sync, now just a single FPS above the 3070 Ti, and matching that of the RTX 4060, though retesting that then gave us performance of around 80 FPS. While we could sit here retesting every card again, we're just finding that the performance on the low preset just isn't consistent, and the results, while they would shift about, still wouldn't make any sense, and in some cases are getting dramatically lower, whereas in others, much higher, and then the likes of the 4060 and 4060 Ti just being in completely the wrong order. As you move up to 4K on low, there's still some anomalies, and I think it's safe to say that low as a whole should be avoided. While the RTX 4090 storms out ahead, the weirdness comes as we move down to the RTX 3090, which comes in at 58 frames per second, even on a retest, whereas before it was getting 72. Beyond that, you could argue that other cards are now lining up a lot better than what we saw at lower resolutions, though throughout testing, it was hard to gauge what was right and what wasn't at all three resolutions on the low setting, including cards on the lower end as we move down the chart, though at least now the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti are in their respective positions in terms of performance. Moving up to the medium preset at 1080p, and it looks as though things have sorted itself out. The RTX 4090 still commands the lead over the 7900 XTX, which sits just behind it. And then as we move down the chart, some standout cards are the likes of the 6950 XT, which can occasionally be had for a good price, coming in just behind the RTX 4070 Ti. The RTX 3090 is finally behaving itself at 122 FPS, which matches the performance of AMD 7800 XT while the lower end 4060 Ti gives us a solid 90 FPS, which matches the RTX 3070. Now as we move further down, we do find some cards now falling below 60 FPS, like the RX 6600 and lower, and Intel, of which this game is technically made for, suffer pretty badly, even at 1080p. Moving up to 1440p, and it's a similar story in terms of where each card sits. Again, the RTX 4090 shows that it's the boss in this game, no matter the settings and the resolution, with the 7900 XTX sitting just behind, with a wider margin between them. The RTX 3090 now comes in at 92 FPS, which puts it just ahead of the 3080 Ti, and just behind the RX 6950 XT from AMD. The 4060 Ti manages to just scrape beyond 60 FPS, which a lot more cards fall below that marker. 
And we now find the lower end 6500 XT with just 4 gig of VRAM and Intel's Arc A380 with just 6 gig of VRAM well, it's just not enough to present an enjoyable gaming experience. As you move up to 4K on medium, we start to see the performance drop in quite a large way across most of the cards tested. We now only have three cards above 60 FPS, that being the RTX 4090, RTX 4080, and RX 7900 XTX. So unless you have big money to drop, there's going to have to be some sacrifices. The RTX 3090 now comes in at 55 FPS, which is still playable, though the more demanding sections may be noticeable. Then, as we move further down, there's quite a lot of cards that are just edging closer to 30 FPS, which is still playable to a degree, but upscaling may be needed to have a generally better experience. Now, in terms of unplayability, anything from the 6700 XT or RTX 4060 or below is where you wouldn't want to be. And the likes of the Intel A380 and 6500 XT, well, we now see single digit performance that really should be avoided. Moving up in quality to the high preset, but moving back down to 1080p, and it's nice to see the cards behaving like they should. The RTX 4090 still takes the crown as the leader, though the RTX 4080 and 7900 XTX, which draw closer, would still give a fluid gameplay experience at over 130 FPS. There are a lot of cards around the 100 FPS mark, including the RTX 4070, 3080 12GB, 3080 Ti, and 7800 XT, and anything from the RX 6700 and up will net you over 60 frames per second. Sadly, at this resolution, the power, or lack of, along with the small amount of VRAM in today's age, really takes a hit with the 6500 XT from AMD and A380 from Intel suffering quite badly. 1440p still has just under half of the cards sitting above 60 FPS, though you could argue that the RX 6800 is still in the game at 59 FPS. While most of the cards that sit above 60 are more towards the 75 to 80 FPS range, like the RTX 3080 Ti, RTX 3090, 6950 XT and 3090 Ti, which are still holding up fine in 2023. As we move further down, the likes of the RTX 4060 Ti falls below 60 FPS by a small margin, while the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 are now in an almost uncomfortable area in terms of performance. Though it gets worse for cards like the RX 6600, ARC A580 and RTX 3050, which join the 6500 XT and A380 as having a bad gaming experience overall. As we move up to 4K, the only card that can handle over 60 FPS is the RTX 4090, though the 4080 does only fall just under at 57 frames per second. Now anything from the RX 6800 and up, along with the RTX 3070 Ti, is still playable, though the 1% low dips could lead to some stuttering in areas that may have you rethinking resolution or quality choices to gain that extra performance. We now also have half of the cards sitting at below 30 FPS, which really isn't a pleasant experience overall, especially as we get into the teens with the likes of the RX 6650 XT and RTX 3060 at sub 20 frames per second. When we move up to the Epic preset, 1080p still has some strong performance across most cards, with the majority still pushing over 60 FPS. The RTX 4090 still leads with the 7900 XTX just behind, showing that AMD and Nvidia are both pretty evenly matched considering the price difference between them. Though you could argue in terms of value for money, AMD is the better buy for this game. Now moving further down and we still see strong performance from both the RTX 3080 12 gig and RX 6800 XT, though we are only at 1080p. Now the RTX 4060 clings on at 61 FPS, while the RX 6600, which hits 33 FPS, is still playable, but I'd personally rather drop down in quality to gain some extra performance. Moving up to 1440p and the numbers are still good from the high end, such as the RTX 4090 at 113 FPS, which comes in much stronger than the RX 7900 XTX and RTX 4080, though at over 90 FPS, their performance is still pretty decent. Then, moving further down, there's still a lot of cards pushing over 60 frames per second, including the RX 6800 XT, RTX 4070, and RTX 3090, to name a few, while other cards like the 7700 XT just fall a little bit short, though upscaling will help here, but will diminish the quality of the visuals ever so slightly. We also still have the likes of the RTX 4060 at 39 FPS, though the dips do hover just below 30, which is a place where you don't really want to be, along with the Intel stack where the A770 is the only one that is just above 30 FPS. Then at 4K on the Epic preset, the only card that manages 60 FPS or higher is the flagship RTX 4090, which comes in with a 1% low that matches the average of the next card down the list, the RTX 4080, which now only sits a single frame per second ahead of the 7900 XTX. 
Beyond this, the performance tapers off towards the 6800 XT, which manages a solid 30 frames per second. Though with a 1% low of 22 FPS, the more intensive parts of the game may lead to stuttering, and then beyond that, it really isn't going to be any fun with any of the other GPUs, as 13 of them now sit at below 20 FPS. So while the game will look great all the time you're standing still, that's about as far as it goes. Now there is a way to get some performance back in terms of upscaling, and depending on the brand of card, you have a few options from FSR or DLSS and ZES as well. As we look through the various cards, we can see some quite healthy uplifts using FSR or DLSS on performance mode, though the quality really did take a hit, especially at 1080p where you could argue it's much more noticeable. Nvidia's 40 series obviously has frame generation to help it along, which would see you changing the upscaling to quality, enabling frame gen and then getting a good balance of performance and visuals. At 1440p, cards like the RX 6600 XT and RX 7600 were bordering on the realms of unplayable, while FSR manages to push performance to new heights that now exceed 60fps. Again, personal preference will see you tinkering with the settings in the hope of balancing out performance and visuals, while the higher end cards just lead to some pretty amazing performance with healthy boosts using FSR, DLSS, or in the case of the 40 series, frame generation as well. Lastly, at 4K and looking at upscaling on the likes of the RX 6600 XT and 7600, we are now back into playable scenarios, but at just over 30 FPS, it's still not fantastic. Whereas the RTX 4060 manages to fight back much harder thanks to frame generation, which takes it from 18 FPS native to 45 FPS with DLSS, and then a further 8 frames per second more when frame gen is turned on. So really, this further highlights that AMD need to hurry up with the rollout of their similar technologies. So that was a lot of data to go through, but I think it's clear to see that the game is optimized fairly well, especially for something that utilizes the latest Unreal 5 engine, which can lead to some pretty awesome looking visuals. Though there clearly is a bug when it comes to lower resolutions, and especially on the low setting, which just led to a pretty big headache for me and the team. But I'm confident that it can be fixed through updates, along with other niggly faults that I found. What was nice to see is that the game itself looks amazing, even without the likes of ray tracing. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for ray tracing, but with some of the games that have come out recently, I don't know, it just feels like it alienates a part of the market who just can't afford the performance hit. Though, to play devil's advocate, that's why the likes of frame generation was invented. Though AMD and Intel are both somewhat lacking behind in that department at the moment. That aside, performance has a lot of areas to choose from, whether you want to play at a lower or higher resolution, or lower or higher setting, or maybe something in between, or to even tweak things to find that happy middle ground between looks and visuals, and of course performance. Now while performance was good, the lower end will struggle in terms of the Intel Arc 300 series and cards like the 6500 XT with its 4GB of VRAM. So if you're looking to play Robocop Rogue City and have one of those cards, Sadly, you're a little out of luck, or you may need to upgrade. Upscaling, I'll be honest, though we tested on performance mode, it looked terrible. And as mentioned, I'd rather drop the resolution or quality settings than enabling that. Though if you have a 40 series, frame gen is a bit of a godsend, as you can set upscaling to quality and not suffer the weirdness that comes along with some of the other modes, while still also getting that high performance. For me, the devs have actually done a great job with the game, and while some tweaks are needed here and there, it's all kind of little things that I can personally look over, because as someone who has just benchmarked over 30 GPUs on a variety of settings, I've likely done things in terms of the game that just aren't expected from the average gamer, and unlikely something that you as a gamer would experience in the first place. So yeah, so tell me, are you going to be checking out Robocop Rogue City, and were you a fan of the original movies? If you were, you will you will actually be pleased to know that Peter Weller voices the character in-game, as he did in the first two movies, and it also has samples of the original music too. And yeah, when I heard that, nostalgic vibes, memories. Yeah, there you go, what's not to love? Also let me know if you'd like to see some CPU performance content as to how the game performs on a variety of AMD and Intel processors. For now, that's going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and appreciate the huge amounts of hard work that went into this video with all of the benchmarking and want to see more like this in the future, where we go all out and test tons of GPUs for certain games, then take a look at our Patreon. It allows us to make content like this and helps us out like you wouldn't believe. We also get access to our charts, exclusive behind the scenes content, and so much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.